Hello, and welcome to Tales from the Graph. Today's story describes a phenomena known as feedback. Let's imagine it's springtime, and you've just planted a delicious garden of kale. You just start to see some kale popping up, and when you start to see kale, you know what that's going to lead to. Generally, it leads to more kale. And once you have more kale, why, you'll probably get more kale. And with any luck, you'll get more kale. And you'll get kale upon kale upon kale. Once you start growing kale, if you've let it go to seed, you know that it really starts to grow exponentially fast. Next thing you know, your whole garden's full of kale. Now once you get some kale, another thing that tends to happen is that it attracts animals and humans that like to eat it. And so once you have a good kale garden going, along, inevitably, comes a snail. The snail is going to eat the kale, and it's going to have a wonderful time. And once it finds out how delicious it really is, it's going to call some of its friends over to enjoy the party. Sorry, uh, I wasn't thinking about this video when I bought this snail puppet, so I only have one. But let's pretend all my other fingers are snails as well, and they all munch happily on the kale until they've really decimated it quite a bit, and you have really not that much kale left. And if there's only a little kale, the snails are going to start to get sad, and they're going to go away, and so then you're going to have a lot, a lot less snails. But then, of course, if you have a lot less snails, the kale is going to come back with a furious rage, and it's going to grow and grow and take over your garden, and inevitably attract the snails. And here come the snails again, eating the kales, and they're all over your kales until they've really done a number on your kales. And then all you've got is snails, which you don't really want to eat. These type, anyway. And of course, then they get lonely, and there's no more kale around, snails start to disappear, kales come back. Kales come back, snails come back. Snails come back, kale goes away, no more kale, no more snail. Again and again and again and again. This is what's called oscillations. And it's actually observed in a lot of predator prey situations. Let's start to quantify this by writing it in a nice time series graph. That's why this is called Tales from the Graph. All right, I've got two pens here, a green one and a blue one. I suppose I'll use the green one for the kale. That seems fair. And so as our story goes, we're starting with a bit of kale that we started growing in our garden here. I'll just mark that K for kale. And as you'll soon see, with lots of resources around, any type of population with enough freedom and resources will generally grow in this exponential fashion. And like I was saying, once you've got a good amount of kale going, you're bound to attract some sort of predator, be it an aphid or a snail or a human or something, is going to notice your success, as is for snail, and it's going to start following the kale in its own exponential growth. As you get more and more snails, you know what's going to happen. They're going to start eating the kales, and so the kale population, although it was growing exponentially, will inevitably have to top off somewhere as the snail population catches up to it and starts eating it all. Then, once the snail population is high enough, what it's going to do is it's going to lower the kale population back down, and so the kale's going to go back down. And with so many snails around, that smaller amount of kale is not going to satisfy them, and then they're going to go down. And then, of course, once you've got your snail population finally under control, What's going to happen is your kale is going to have a lot more freedom, less predators around, and so your kale is going to rebound. And once your kale rebounds, snail is going to call up all of its buddies, and snails are going to come back. And that's how you end up getting this oscillating type of graph, which is so ubiquitously observed in many predator-prey systems. This type of phenomena exhibits two types of feedback, positive feedback and negative feedback. So now I'll describe them a little bit. Positive feedback is a reinforcing type of feedback where when you have a positive amount, that positive amount is going to lead to more. You notice as I told this story, and I was trying to graph the amounts of each of these populations, I was having the populations respond to both their own state and the state of the other population as well. And so, without the presence of many snails around, 
The kale is responding to its own state in a positive way, and it's exhibiting exponential growth, which is a type of positive feedback. Similarly, that more leads to more, a negative amount will lead to less. That part isn't really applicable to our particular situation here because we don't have negative amounts, but we'll get a chance to see lots of instances of this example, positive type of feedback, where, where you have a negative amount that leads to even more of a negative amount, which is why I'm writing less. So that's positive feedback. But this predator-prey system also exhibits what's known as negative feedback. And negative feedback is a regulating type of feedback. You'll notice that it kind of responds in the opposite way of positive feedback. When there's a positive amount, that leads to less. And so in our instance here, when we had a positive large amount of kale, and then the snail started to grow, an increase in the snail population leads to a decrease in the kale population. And so you can see that the snails are regulating the kales, and that's an example of the negative regulating feedback. And just as positivity leads to a negative um, reaction, if you did have a negative amount, and we'll see more instances of that later, then that negative amount would lead to the opposite reaction, which is a positive reaction. So those are negative and positive feedbacks. How it pertains to our tail here is that positive kale gives a positive feedback to the snails. So when there's more kales, there's more snails. For negative feedback, more snails, well, snails eat the kales, and so snails are gonna, more snails are gonna lead to less kales, and so you've got that negative feedback there <laughs> where you have the snails regulating the kales. I hope you enjoyed this snail kale tale from the graph.